Today I'm going to be showing you how to prepare a pure dry sample of copper sulfate crystals. To do that you're going to need sulfuric acid, copper oxide, some filter paper, an evaporating basin, a conical flask, a spatula, a stirring rod, a filter funnel, a measuring cylinder, a 250 milliliter beaker, and finally a 100 milliliter beaker. So we're going to start by measuring 40 centimeters cubed of sulfuric acid using the measuring cylinder. And we are going to pour this into the 250 milliliter beaker. Next, we are going to warm the acid to increase the rate of reaction and to make sure as much copper oxide reacts with the sulfuric acid as possible. So to heat, we use the blue flame, not the orange safety flame. And we don't want to boil the sulfuric acid because that's dangerous. Uh, we don't want it giving off any dangerous gases that we can breathe in. We're just going to warm it, so make sure it doesn't boil. Now that the sulfuric acid is nice and warm, we're going to turn off the Bunsen burner. And the top of the beaker should be relatively cool. We're going to move it onto another heat proof mat. And we're going to add a spatula of copper oxide. Okay, so we're going to add one spatula of copper oxide and we are going to stir using the stirring rod. Now when a metal when a metal oxide reacts with an acid, a salt and water are formed. So when copper oxide reacts with sulfuric acid, Copper sulfate is produced as well as water. Okay, so you want to keep stirring. Eventually, the solution will start turning blue and all of the black copper oxide will disappear. That's because it's reacted with the acid. Okay, it hasn't dissolved, it's reacted. So you can see in the bottom of the beaker, okay, there isn't much copper oxide left. In fact, now it has all reacted. So because it's all reacted, we want to go ahead and add another spatula of copper oxide and keep stirring and we want to keep adding spatulas of copper oxide until the copper oxide is in excess now what that means is that there's more than enough how will you know when the copper oxide has been added in excess well there will be black copper oxide powder remaining in the bottom of the beaker why do we want to add the copper oxide in excess? Well, we want to ensure that all of the sulfuric acid has reacted. So we get pure crystals of copper sulfate at the end. Now we have a mixture of copper sulfate, water and unreacted copper oxide. So we don't want that unreacted copper oxide to be uh, in our crystals 
at the end. So we need to separate that from the mixture. So to do that, we're going to use the filter paper, conical flask and filter funnel. So take your filter paper, fold it in half. Fold it in half again. And then you want to open up one of the sides like that to so form a cone. Okay, a cone. And that fits into the top of the filter funnel, which will go into the conical flask. All right, and then you want to slowly pour the mixture into the filter paper. Now the copper sulfate and water, because the copper sulfate is dissolved in water, the particles are small enough to fit through the holes in the filter paper. So they're going to go down and be collected in the bottom as the filtrate. The copper oxide powder is too big to fit through the holes in the filter paper. So it will remain on the filter paper as the residue. So you want to keep adding your mixture until you've collected your copper sulfate in the bottom of the conical flask. And as you can see, it's a nice blue. After the filtration of the mixture has finished, you can see all the black copper oxide left as the residue on the filter paper. You want to pour the copper sulfate solution into an evaporating basin. Next, we need to evaporate the water from the copper sulfate solution to be left with uh, pure, dry copper sulfate crystals. So we're going to evaporate approximately half of the water using a water bath. So I'm going to put the tripod and gauze mat back there and change it to the blue flame. Now in this beaker, I filled it about halfway with water and we're going to put that on top of the Bunsen burner and we're going to heat this using the water bath. So I'm going to put the evaporating basin with the copper sulfate solution on top of the beaker like that. Okay, and then as the water boils the steam will rise and heat to the bottom of the evaporating basin, which will cause the water in the copper sulfate solution to evaporate. So as you can see, the water is boiling. The steam from the water is uh, heating the bottom of the evaporating basin, which is causing the water in the copper sulfate solution to evaporate. Against the back black background you can see the, uh, the steam evaporating from the solution. So when approximately half of the water has evaporated you want to turn the Bunsen burner off and you want to leave this uh, at the side of a lab for the rest of the water to evaporate uh, at room temperature. And because it evaporates slowly, this will form large crystals. Now at the end, when all of the water has evaporated, you will be left with something that looks like this. So as you can see, we now have pure dry crystals of copper sulfate.